Ministries, and I am so proud of you guys. Wow, you look good. My wife and I have planned for two years to meet up with you. God's awesome. If you're looking around and you're saying, who is that guy standing on stage? Let me give you some advice. You don't know me. And that's proof that God can use anybody. God is that good. Before I get started, I just want to say thanks to all of you for showing up. And I also want to thank all these volunteers who have they volunteered to do their ministry to help you guys today. And I just want to thank each and every one of them. Also have a great production team and a lot of people that went into this that I don't even know them by name. They just stepped up and did the work, seeing what the ministry was doing. And I just think everyone that just put their time into this over time of the past two years. There's people that's been with me from the beginning and there's people that stepped up yesterday and there's some that actually showed up today and started helping. I just thank each and every one of you for listening to God because this ministry is out to reach souls for Christ and that's what we're gonna do tonight. First of all, hey, I, I wanna just take a second and tell you a little story. You have time for a story? I'm from Alabama. My brother who's up here singing, he's from Alabama, same place. I have one more brother, he's from Alabama too. My brother that's in Alabama will never ever come to California, that's the truth. Never gonna do it, why? He will never get on the plane. He's Alabama country and that's the way it's gonna be and that's the way it always be. The reason I tell you that, I want you to remember that throughout this message tonight. I want you to remember, my brother will never do what? That's right. While you're thinking about that, I want to tell you this. Decipher Down, Josh from Decipher Down just walked down and prayed with me and what a feeling. But he had some news to tell me. And that's the call that is in Nashville was praying, a hundred thousand people are praying for each and every one of you at this event today. Isn't that awesome? Wow! God wants something to happen today. He's expecting something to happen today. Let's start out with prayer. And I want you to wonder if today is the day that God was calling you. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you today with our open hearts, our open minds. Whatever's in this world that's distracting us, we're going to cut it out today. We want to open our hearts to you and we want to listen to your word and what you have to say. You've planned this event for two years. There is some reason you wanted people here today and you wanted someone here to hear it. God, I just take up your name, take the Holy Spirit in our hands and in our hearts, and we spread it around this place, God. Just let the Holy Spirit take over right here at the Rose Bowl Stadium like never before, God. We lift up this place in your name, amen. My brother who would never come to California. One day he called me up and he says, hey, Paul. He goes, man, I'm in California. I'm like, man, I know you're lying. He goes, no, I'm in Saratos, California, man. I'm like, Saratos, California. I go, well, I'm in, no I'm in Southern California. So you must be in Northern California. But I said this, I said, if you're really here and you're in some place called Saratos, California, I will drive to wherever you're at. 
I will get there. You just tell me where you're at, specifically what freeways. And he didn't really understand the area. So I just said, you know what? Why don't we do this? Why don't we call our other brother, Chazzy, and just have Chazzy look it up on the computer and let's map this thing out. So he calls up Chazzy and Chazzy's like, Saratoga, California. There's no place called Saratoga, California. So he said, why don't you spell it for me? He goes, yeah, all right. It's C-E-R-R-I-T-O-S. I said, Mark, in Alabama it may be called Saratoga, but in California we call that Cerritos. And you're about five miles from us. Yeah, let's meet up. Ooh, get an education, you guys. <laughs> I've told my brother I was going to use that story because I was going to pick on his Alabama thing. I'm from there. I can do that. Using that story, it's a proof that God can do anything and he has a plan. He has a plan for each and every one of us. He has a plan that you don't even know about. My brother didn't know he was coming down that day. My brother had no clue he was going to show up that day. You know why he showed up? Because he drives an 18-wheeler truck and they sent him to California. Yeah. Amen. Because without that happening, this rest of the story just won't make sense. My brother and I went out. And we decided to pick up our other brother. We said, you know what? Let's go to lunch with Chazzy and we'll go out to lunch. So I went out and uh, we got in the car. We drove around. And as I picked up the other brother, we were going to go to this hamburger place in Orange. And we drove down the street. Now I'm one of those weird guys. Nothing gets by me and I'm that weird. As I'm driving down the street, there's this thing in the middle of the street. And so right on the middle of yellow lines, the double yellow lines, and I just pick it up and I throw it in the back of my car. I actually stopped my car in the middle of the street. I want to know what it was. Please. I took this thing and I threw it in the back and we just sat, went ahead and ate lunch and then I went home and I decided to open it up. Now, if you're anywhere born after 1980s, you won't understand this. So I have to explain it. I looked in this thing, and it's a day planner. To you that still use those technical devices and have never seen one, it's a calendar inside of a leather case. Your whole life is documented day by day. Well, that's just not worth the risk. Man, I, work, I risked my life. I risked everything that I had to pick up this. I stopped my car in the middle of the street. That's the craziest thing. Well, then whenever I put this thing back, hold up. This is a nice day plan. Hold up. This is not no ordinary. No, this is extraordinary. This one has a pen in it. You listen, let me tell you something. Not only does it have a pen, it's a mock block pen. Where's my camera guy? Can you see that little white cap on the end of this thing? You probably can't take my word. It's a little white cap. That means it's a mock block. If you don't know what that means, it's a hundred and fifty dollar pen. Yeah! Woo! My day is good. I love it. I got a hundred pin that I could never afford my little Volkswagen bug. I am the best man and if you don't understand what I mean, let me show you this. Look at that. I look cool now, don't I? You may not know me, but you know I'm carrying a $150 pin. It's the best thing that's ever, ever happened to me. That's, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Now this was like 10 or 15 years ago, okay? There's good things that's happened since then. I'm walking around proud. I love this pen. I'm loving it. And now my brother's going over here. He's looking for money. He's going through this thing thinking there's so many pockets on this thing. There has to be some money in here. He hands it back to me and the worst thing in the world happened. You know what they put in the front of day planners? 
a name and address and a phone number. You know what that means? I'm going to be still in the pit if I keep it because I know who it belongs to. I see a few of you going, ah, oh, church. Man, I looked at this thing and I go, no, God, you blessed me. You can't take this away. Come on, God, you finally gave me something and you're going to strip me of this? Come on. Paul, don't steal the pen. God, what if she's not at home? What if I call this phone number of this lady and, it, 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 and she's not home? Can I have like 48 hours? If she don't call in 40 hours, do I get to keep the pen? All right, let's try that. So I pick up the phone, man. I go up and I pick up the phone and I call this, this woman and I got an answering machine. Yeah! Hey, yeah. Uh, let me tell you something. I found a day planner. I won't mention the pen. I found a day planner. And um, it's yours and it has your name on it. Please call me back. I hung up the phone and man, an hour went by. I'm like, God, if we're going with 72 hour system, I only got 71 hours left and that pen's mine, right? Or if we're going on the 48 hour system, I only got 47 hours, right? Yeah, so then two hours went by and I'm starting to count down. This pen is so mine. I'm not taking it out of my pocket. I don't care. I mean, it just looks good. Can you see? You can probably see it glaring off the lights, can't you? It's nice. It's a little, you, you think I'm kidding? That's 150 bucks. It may write like the 59 cent kind, but it don't matter. That lady called me back like 8.30 at night. <laughs> it's me and the pen. I gotta put it back in. Come on, lady. Oh, yeah, I got your day planner. Here it is. So I put the pen back in and I said, well, she's not gonna be here for an hour. I'm gonna put it back in my pocket. That pen's mine, man. When she gets here, maybe she won't even know it was in there. That lady, she said she wanted to come overnight. And I'm thinking, man, this must be like a 50, 60, 70 year old lady. She shouldn't be driving at night. It's dangerous out there. And I tried telling her that the truth was I was going to keep this pin in my pocket all night long. I wasn't going to take this shirt off. It was going to stay on. I was going to keep it. That pin was mine, at least for the next few hours. Finally, she convinces me. She goes, no, I really need to come over. There's some important papers in that day planner. And I'm like, all right, come on over. All right. You know what? There's a Bible verse about that. It's the very first chapters of the Bible. It starts in Genesis 2.15. It says the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. The Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day you eat it. You will surely die. And you say what does that have to do with the pen? Huh? That don't even make sense. That's probably the dumbest verse I ever heard to go along with that story. It goes on later to say thou shalt not steal. Later, it has other things that we're supposed to listen to. But you know, in our life, in our way that we listen today, I have found out that people have decided that little things don't matter to God anymore. Stealing a pen is not a big deal. Even though if it says thou shalt not steal, we'll do it if we can justify it. I found it in the middle of the street. It's okay. It's not okay. When Adam was told this by God that if he ate off of this particular tree, imagine this. He said he would die. That's how much God cares about the little things. If you don't understand that, think of this. It's eating a piece of fruit and you'll die for it. God cares about those little things. When I told that woman to come over and get her pen and her day planner, 
That's just going by what the Bible says. Thou shalt not steal. There's other verses you can think of that just makes that the right thing to do. Now, I want to tell you something that further on, there's something about this Bible verse that continues when Eve comes along. In chapter three, it says, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall need not eat of the tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, you may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it lest you die. For all you Christians, that's the beginning of legalism right there. Do you see what she said? She said, you can't eat it and you can't touch it. God never said you can't touch it. He just said you can't eat it. She just added it in. It's also the first lie recorded in the Bible. What is God telling you in your life? He's telling you he wants you to listen to him. Why? Just like he talked to Adam. He was telling Adam, do all of this. You know what Adam had? Adam had everything. Anything that Adam wanted in this world was his. The only commandment that existed was you can't eat the fruit off of that one tree. You know, God had a plan for Adam and it was a beautiful plan. He was going to be able to reign over everything. Eve comes along and she was going to be side by side as one flesh with this man. And they had control of it all. God loved these people. He loved them. He wanted to do the best. He just said one thing. You know what? Don't eat off that tree. Satan comes along to Eve. Now, it's always amazing how Satan works. He comes up to Eve and he says, Eve, so what did God tell you? This is the first thing you better know whenever you study the Bible. You better know because Satan's going to ask you. What does God tell you? Oh, I don't know. No, Eve needed to get it right. God said not to eat off of that tree. So she quotes it back. But you need to know that in your heart. You need to know that God really meant it when he said not eat, to eat off that tree. Satan comes around. He looks at her and goes, ah, ah, hey, you're talking about God? You're talking about God? You really think that he doesn't want you to eat off that tree? You know why he doesn't want you to eat off that tree? Because you're going to be like him if you eat off that tree. If you take a bite of that fruit, you're going to be as good as he is. You're going to be intelligent. You're going to know all things. You're going to be like God. You got to remember Adam and Eve already had everything. There was no death. There was nothing bad in this world. There was only one thing they couldn't do. And Satan was using that. And he drilled it into her and made it seem pleasing to the eyes. He kept telling her and telling her, it's good. It's good. So she goes over and she gets her husband. They get together and they sin together by eating the fruit. And they broke the commandment of God. You know, that's sin right there. If you don't understand sin, let me explain it. Disobeying God is sin. God has a plan for you. It's the best plan in the whole world. Before you were born, he had this plan. And he's only asking you to follow it. And he's telling you like he's your parent. He's saying, just listen to me and I got the best things for you. Think of Adam and Eve, they had the best. Satan, on the other hand, is saying he's a big fat liar. He's saying he's lying to you. Do not listen to him. He's trying to keep you from something and I'm going to show you the way. Satan is lying. He's a big fat liar. He is going to take you to hell if you listen to him. Stop listening to him. Turn to Jesus. Listen to what Jesus has to say. You know, whenever you listen to Jesus Christ, your life will change. Eve looked at that fruit and saw it was pleasant to the eyes. You know what? Satan didn't completely lie. I'll give him a small benefit. He did say that you will not surely die, meaning instantly. He just didn't explain it's a lifetime of death. 
He didn't explain to her, hey Eve, if you eat off of that fruit, you are going to open up death to every one of your children throughout this world. There will be no way that they can escape it because they're not good enough. They will have to have God come down and rescue them if they're going to escape it. Eve, you did, you, you did not know this, but when you ate off that fruit, you opened the stairway and the doorway to evil on this earth. Adam, did you know that because of you eating that fruit, changing away from God's plan, that now your sons and your daughters will be killed, they will be molested, they will be raped, all because you ate off of a little piece of fruit. No, it's because you disobeyed God. Those little things like stealing a pen is a big thing in God's eyes. If your heart is not right with Jesus Christ, you will steal the pen. If your heart's right with God, you will say, no, Satan, I am not listening to you. You are a liar. God knows what's best for me. I am his child. He will take care of me. And he says not to steal. And I will not steal. A lot of the families today are split up. They're divorced. Their children have double parents, double grandparents. Some of them have triple parents and triple step parents, other parents. You know why? Because Satan, as your family was perfect and you had the perfect husband and wife and couple of children family. You know what Satan said to one of you, one of the two in that group? He said, you know, that secretary at the office wants to go to lunch with you. But I have a spouse and two children at home. It's okay. It's just lunch. Go to lunch, man. Come on. And you go to lunch and then you find out it's not only lunch. You're now seeing her after work. And then not only after work, you start to make the weekends. Then you find out that your wife caught you. And not only did you leave your perfect family, you lost your children. You lost your wife and the girlfriend or boyfriend left you anyway. And so Satan stole that right out from underneath you. God didn't plan that. God said for man and woman to be together, stay together as one. If you listen to God's word, and I mean really listen to it. Some people say, well, you, you can read God's word. No, you didn't you need to listen to it. See, because when you read the word, it's living word means it breathes. It has a heartbeat. Whenever you live your life, if you're reading the scripture, that heartbeat of that word will go along with you every day. Every day. You know, people tell me, Paul, how did this not freak you out when you rented this place? How did that not make you go insane? How did that not make you just no? you're over budgeted. You don't have enough money. Your production company left you. Paul, why do you stay so strong in this? It's because every single night I take the, my little MP3 player, seriously, that has the Bible on it and I sleep with it playing all night long. And when they tell me I need a hundred thousand more dollars, I can sleep all night because God's word it says, do not worry about tomorrow. God has a plan for you. God has chosen you before you were born for you to be his. The only reason that you are not his, if you decide to leave God, if you decide like Adam and Eve to listen to Satan, you can, God is not going to make you stay, but he's telling you this. If you listen and obey him, he will walk with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will be yours. He, you will be his child. You will be a son of God or daughter. You will go to eternity forever. It's good. You know what? You, you need to think about this tonight. What you've sold out to Satan. What has he taken from you? Is your family messed up? Are your bills messed up? Do you have things going on in your life that Satan tried to convince you? Go to Vegas, spend all you have, and then you lost everything? I'll tell you what. I know a lot of people who lost a lot of money, and I can do a much better job by renting out the Rose Bowl and letting God do some amazing work using that same amount of money. I can tell you, there's people in Vegas this weekend that spent more money than we spent here. And we're going to get rewarded so well. 
When one of you accept Jesus Christ, man, God's going to be up there with the angels going, yeah! She pulled up at, right in front of my house. Now you, you say, Paul, where are you going with this? I'm going back to the pen store. That's where I'm going. Whenever she pulls up, she pulls up. I see this black Corvette. Man, this black Corvette goes straight in front of me all the way across. And I'm like, well, uh, that wasn't her, but she looked good. Well, before I was married, that black Corvette comes back down and it stops right in front of the house and says, Hi, are you the guy with the day planner? I'm like, yes, I am. This girl steps out of this car. She is dressed up in the nicest. Well, she was beautiful. She was awesome. She looked good. I'm like, oh, no. Because you know what? I look like this. My shirt was untucked. My hair looked like that. It looks the same. I know. You can't buy wax better than that. Anyway, I, my hair was messed up. And man, I, I was just sitting there looking at this girl going, opportunity knocked and I missed it. I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right, lady. I go, you know, here's your day planner. And I want to tell you this. I, 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 I kept my pen, your pen. I kept your pen. Yeah. I kept it right, right in my pocket. I'm going to put it back in there and I'll zip it up for you. Nice pen you got. I went over, went over, handed her that. She was going to get back in the Corvette, man. She came back out. And let me tell you how God works. She came over to me and she took a $10 bill and she put it in my pocket. And I'm like, well, what do you say? You don't want the money, but you're going to embarrass her if you say anything. So I'm like, all right, we'll just keep the money. Whatever. Thank you. All right. She rides off in her nice little Corvette. And that's a nice Corvette. I've never cared about Corvettes until that day. That day, I fell in love with Corvettes. And that girl wasn't bad looking either, but that Corvette, man. I went ahead and I went inside the house and my friends were in there, my two brothers, and we're sitting around talking. I'm like, oh yeah, she gave me 10 bucks. I gave up a $150 pen, but she gave me 10 bucks. All right, I pull it out and I show them it's a $100 bill. I'm like, woo! Oh yeah, wait a minute. I can't do that. It wasn't worth a hundred and fifty, a hundred bucks, man. I mean, the pen was worth it, but doing the right thing wasn't worth it. So I was going to call her up. I said, you know what? I got to call this lady up. I went over to guess where the number is. Yeah, the day planner. Guess who has the day planner? That Corvette. I'm like, ah, but I know what time I called her. And it was a long distance call because she was in Irvine somewhere and I'm over there near Saratos. And when we took that thing, we took that, that day, that, that date at the time that I would have called her. And I circled a big thing on the calendar and said, this day, this time, when my bill comes, I'm going to look at the number I called. And I'm going to call her up and get her address and send her this $100. I am not spending this money. Man, it was great. Everybody in my house is saying, that's the perfect woman for you. Now, you got to know that I have never been good with women. I'll tell you. They, they see me and they wave by. They never went, hello. It was awful. So for this woman to be considered the one that I'm supposed to be with, she just drove off in a Corvette. That just sort of fits my story right there. All right? This is not going to happen. She sends me a thank you card three days later. It's great. There's no phone number, but there's an address. I drive over there, man. I'm so excited. I'm going to go see this girl. Plus, I'm going to give her money back. And it's mailboxes, etc. What a smart woman. She knew I was psychotic and go follow her. Man, I went ahead and I, I took it. I, I went down to Disneyland. I don't live far from there, right? All right, went down to Disneyland, bought two Disneyland passes, put it in an envelope and wrote her a note and said, you know what? It is rude to take this much money for what I did. I am not doing this. I bought sent those two tickets and at the very bottom, I didn't mention something about, hey, it'd be cool to see you again. But I didn't even know if she's married. I had to leave a little gap of saying, meant to see you again in case I find your day planner or something. I don't know. But anyway, left that big gap there. She's sitting there. One week goes by. One week. Not one phone call. Not one thank you. Not one nothing. I sent this girl two Disneyland tickets. Man, what? All my friends, everywhere I go, oh, what did you hear from that girl? Let me tell you, that's cute about the first three days. 
I can only say no so many macho ways. No, she didn't call. No. But I went home all day yesterday, so she did, you know. My answer machine may have been broke. Well, then about the third day, you run out of that. Well, she didn't call because the answer machine, oh, no, I used that one the other day. No, she didn't. Well, then the second week comes up, and I'm still talking. I go, no matter where I go, people, the first thing they ask, what about the girl in the Corvette? You know what, I have no life, and you're just rubbing it in. It's all, I mean, I'm a nerd, I'm geeky, I have nothing going for me, and you are putting your foot and running around, man. You're making me feel like nothing. All my friends are now my enemies. I have no friends. I finally, man, the third week, and I finally got so frustrated with my friends because I really did. I walked into this one um, business office, and even the business people I know were asking me this. I walk in, and the man looks at me and goes, hey, that girl called you, huh? And I'm like, oh. I quit doing business with him. I stopped. I, I couldn't go back. I said, no, she didn't. I go, and you know what? That, it, it's not going to happen. It's not my destiny. It's not the one God chose for me. It's not anything to do with me. I found her day planner. She stole my pen, and I ended up with a hundred bucks and two Disneyland passes that I sent her, which I didn't even get to use. I want my pen back. On Mother's Day, I walked through the house and the phone was ringing. I ran over to the phone. I pick it up and it's this girl on the other end. She's like, hi, is Paul there? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, I, I, I got your note and message and I've been going through a lot. But she goes, you know, I've really been wanting to call you. I've been really wanting to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, cool. I haven't really thought anything about you, but all right. No, she's good. <laughs> hey, you got me macho when you can. Don't let them know that you've never had a serious relationship. Yep, I have a couple girlfriends and I'm busy this weekend, but yeah, I might be able to make time Friday. Now there's one problem with this. We actually did set a date for Friday. Now we hung up the phone and we're, we're going to go see each other on Friday. The problem with that is this. I have a reputation of every time a girlfriend actually says she's going to go out with me, they always call up and say later that, hey, you know what? I'm busy, actually. I can't do it. And guess what happened on Wednesday? I get this phone call. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, it's you. Oh, that's cool. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, can we cancel Friday? Friday? Okay. Sure. I don't know what to say, but I'm going to cry. <laughs> I got it. I really, I just blew it off. I'm like, all right. And she goes, I'm really busy Friday, but can we go out Thursday instead? Yeah! Amen! Woo! There is a God! Yes, nobody's ever said that before. Thursday, that's better. That's a good one. And you only got 24 hours to, to say no, and I'm not going to answer the phone after we hang up. <laughs> no, we're good. Man, I hung up that phone, and I looked around, and there was nobody in the house. There was nobody to tell. There was not one person. I walked out in my neighborhood, and they thought I was a freak, because I'm running down the street going, yeah, woo! Yeah, my neighbors are looking at me going, we never knew he did drugs. <laughs> Did I say God has a plan for you? God has a plan for you. God loves you from the day that you were born and beyond that and after that. He told Jeremiah he, he knew him before he was even conceived in the womb. You know what that means? Before you are even in existence at all, God has a plan for you. He loves you. He wants to do something miraculous in your life. He wants to do something amazing. But Satan is there to rip it apart. He's where they're, they're tearing away. You know what he told me that day? You know what he said to me? He said this. He said, Paul, did you see the $150 pin? Paul Karnick, look at that pin. Look at that little white cap. That's a Mont Blanc $150 pin. Boy, put that in your pocket. You wear that around with pride. That's yours. Yep. You know what God said? Thou shalt not steal. 
You know what Satan said? Paul, it's a small pen. God doesn't care about the pen, really. Paul, come on, think about it. What's $150 to God? Hey, Paul, take the pen. No, you know what? I gotta listen to God. Come on, Paul, take the pen. Come on, Paul, man, give it to the pen. It's $150, it's nothing to God. You're okay. No, Paul, thou shalt not steal. There you go, God, I'll go with Paul, steal the pen, I can't listen to you, man. You ever went through one of these conversations? I do it all the time. Satan, I am not listening to you. Come on, Paul, look at the pen, look at that. Come on, take the pen, Paul, take the pen. Satan, don't get away, I'm not taking the pen. Paul Karnick, because you didn't take the pen, you listen to me, this is God talking. Paul Karnick, because you didn't steal the pen and you obey me, that woman in that car is gonna be your wife. You are gonna have two beautiful children. Oh, up that pen any day. My wife, Christina, and Grace, my daughter, and Hannah, this is a bunch of junk compared to what I love and see in my daughters and my wife. <laughs> Satan was trying to steal something from me. He's trying to steal something from you. Whatever it is in your life, he's trying to make you take the pen. If it says in the Bible, thou shalt not steal, you will obey it. If it says in the Bible, anything that is not of God, and you listen to the word of God, you listen. If it says to do something and you go against God's word, you know that's sin. So you need to listen to God's word. What I'm telling you is I was on the verge of losing everything that I would eventually love in my life. Had it not been for me meeting my wife and having those children, you would not be here today. I would have never rented out this place because God gave me a wife that was just a psychotic of me and wanted to see you guys come here today. God has worked so good in our life and I want you to know that. If you can, please stand. If you're able to stand. I wanna give each and every one of you an opportunity to find the right way, the plan that Jesus Christ has for you. Man, if you're having a miserable, pitiful life and you don't know Jesus, I'll tell you, he's got a better plan. There's going to be people down here to pray for you and you can come down anytime you want. Just start walking down. They will not stop you from coming to this building. We have been planning for two years with God to do this message tonight because there's somebody here that needs to hear it. There's somebody here that says my life has been stolen from, from me by Satan. He's just taking it from God and he's keeping it and I want it back. I want my life back. me. I want what God had planned for me way before I even was in existence. I need you to step out and come down these aisles and let's change that today and make a right relationship with God right now on July the 7th, 2007. It can be your new birthday in Jesus Christ. You have to move your feet and you have to walk down. If Jesus is telling you, you need to move. If Satan steals tonight from you, I can't guarantee you what other day you have. You have to come down and accept Jesus. We are going to pray for you. We are going to be with you. We are going to tell you about the love of Jesus Christ. You are going to see the love of Jesus Christ. You are going to feel the love of Jesus Christ. You are going to know that Jesus Christ is real. You are going to know that he's in your heart. You are going to know that he's in your life. You are going to know that God loves you more than anything. We pray.
stadium, we'll fit them on this football field. I don't care. We'll move the stage if we have to. If Jesus is calling you to a new life, you come down to this field, we have people that's going to pray with you. We have people that want to pray with you. And they want to share the love of Jesus Christ with you. It's so okay. The last thing I need is to. Don't let Satan steal this. If you feel that tug on your heart, that's the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the spiritual world. He's calling you down here. Get down here now. Come see and experience Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Come experience it today. You feel it. You can feel it. I promise you. God Jesus is here He's for you. He's ready down here. But you're in this place. Please let us stay in place. In your holiness, the word of God speaks. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
young people are crying for her teeth. She, they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. The world is offering drugs. The world is offering alcohol. The world is offering sex. Hallelujah. But we offer to this Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you bless your people today, oh God. We pray you open their hearts and open their minds, oh God. Help them to make that decision today, oh God, to surrender their life unto you, Lord Jesus. Help them to realize, oh God, that tomorrow is not promised to them, Lord Jesus. Help us as parents, oh God, to be examples in our homes, examples in our community, Lord Jesus. Help us as pastors in the church and leaders in the church, oh God, to uphold your standards, Lord Jesus. Help us, oh God, in our daily walk and in all that we do. That we do it because of you. Because we love you. God bless you. God bless you. God is so powerful. God is so beautiful. You know, while you're talking to the counselors down here on the field, realize that there's people up in the stands praying for you. There's people in Nashville praying for you. There's people in all around the world knowing about this event and other events, and they're praying that today people accept Jesus, and you're down here to do that. Before we uh, have a final prayer, I just feel like there's still... It could be one more person. And I just don't want to make it close too soon. If you're up in the stands and you just haven't decided, but you feel something different, you feel something talking to you in your heart, and your stomach feels a little nauseous, that's cause God's not letting you go away without making you feel sick. He wants you down here on this field and he wants to save you. He wants a better life for you. You're his child and he wants you back. So I'll just give you a minute or two while they're talking down here and praying with these down here. It's not too late. You can come down and we just would love to pray with you and share Jesus Christ down here. So about another minute. And then we'll do a final prayer. If you're a counselor and you don't have someone praying with, please look, walk around. We do see some people that's standing that need counselors to pray with them. Find them. Just find them. Search them out. Pray with them. There's still people coming. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. Today was about Jesus Christ. Just Jesus Christ. Because you were forsaken.
says that if you just believe in Jesus Christ, that's it. But what does believe mean? The word believes mean that you're going to turn your life over and trust that he knows what to do with it. And you're going to believe every word that he says and every word that he says is printed, is printed in the Bible. That's what he wants you to know about it. That's the relationship he wants to build on. And when you sleep at night, you can actually listen to that while you sleep and it will comfort you through no matter what struggles. No matter if you're financially in debt. No matter if you have things happening in your home. If your life is turned upside down. If you listen to the word of God. If you read the word of God daily. That will relieve anything of this world. The world cannot defeat the word of God. It's too powerful. Let's pray I just want the people that's here to accept Jesus Christ and truly mean it. I want you to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I've messed up my life. I need you to take it over. I know that I was born into this world. I was born a sinner. And you paid a price to get me back. On July the 7th, 2007, I'm giving my life back to you. Please forgive me for all my sins. I know that you will do it. Your word tells me so. Help me, Lord. To keep in touch with you every day. Let me never forget you. Show me your power in this new relationship that I have with you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in these new Christians. Just follow the counselors over, they'll tell you which way to 